Recording in progress. Right, folks. So what we're going to do today is we're going to build on the the simple sales stories that you've been developing already um, in the last few weeks. So it's about what's my product about? For example, here's a, you know, here's a moment where it gets used. And here's a customer like you who uses it. And that's the kind of the really basic ingredients of selling with a story, making sure you're clear so we can see what you're talking about. We can see it in our heads um, and saying, OK, look, there's someone else over here who already uses it. And that's very powerful. OK, what we're going to do now is, is look at two more cards that will help you in this process. First is called Rags to Riches. It's a story arc, story structure card with a blue surround, um, which is the simplest structure you can put on a selling story. And it probably accounts for about 95% of all business advertising uses this card or this structure. Okay, so it's good, it's good. Okay, the other card we'll look at is this one called Hero and Guide. And the Hero and Guide card is a way of you thinking about yourself as a character in your own story. Your customer is a character and so are you. Okay, so. We're going to kick, kick off then with Rags to Riches. So the the Rags to Riches story, as the title suggests, is basically the Cinderella fairy tale of a someone who starts out life in a very sort of low position down at the bottom, and by the end of the story is in a good position. So they've gone from bad to good. Um, it is the story of Cinderella, the story of Rocky, it's the story of Steve Jobs or or Bill Gates, you know, working in the garage on their little home computer, and yeah, you know, or J.K. Rowling writing stories in a cafe as a single mother, now one of the richest women in the world. Okay, so that's a rags to riches story. Here's the thing: two things about rags to riches. One, we love them. We absolutely love a rags to riches story. Why? Well, it's kind of wish fulfillment, um, but also it's an underdog story. And we psychologically identify with the underdog. All of us do. Even someone like Elon, Elon Musk identifies with the underdog. I know it sounds crazy, but he does. Why? Because even mega rich, mega powerful Elon Musk was once a two year old who could be picked up and Dump, you know, put to bed against his will by the big adults who surrounded him. So the underdog in us is the two-year-old going, that's not fair. Ah! Um, and the the underdog is the is the bit of you that goes, no, I don't like being pushed around by someone who's bigger than me. Uh, I don't like being at the bottom. I want to be, okay. So the Rags to Riches story is about the underdog who then achieves something. Um, and going into even in in detail into rags to riches it's not just about getting money um so the point of the cinderella story is not that cinderella ends up rich the point is that she's recognized by the prince as the beautiful and kind person that she is and that's what the point of the cinderella story is the point of the rocky story you know rocky actually doesn't win the fight at the end of the first Rocky film. He loses on points, but everyone recognises him as a fighter, and that's what really matters. So the Rags to Riches journey isn't money, it's recognition. It's going from a hidden value inside. There's something inside so strong, as Labby Sifri once said. Something inside so strong, but no one else values it. By the end of the story, everyone can go, yes, oh, look, look at him, look at her. Okay. <laughs> So that's a really powerful story for your customer. Okay. They've got a problem. And you're saying, come with me, we'll give you the solution. You're anxious about cyber security. We'll give you cyber protection. You're bored and hating the winter in your northern city. We'll take you to the sunshine on holiday. Okay. So it's a very, very powerful and very simple story. Um, and like I say, you can play the fairy godmother in this version of the story. So the story isn't about you, it's about your customer. And your customer's got a problem, there's a solution waiting for them, something that will make them feel better, make them feel valued. Okay, in the middle, there's you, somewhere, doing something. Giving them advice, selling them a product, giving them whatever it is you're doing. Okay, so that's Okay, that's the bare bones of rags to riches. On the back of the card, 
and it breaks it down into three basic stages, yeah, beginning, middle, and end, where the beginning is the kind of the hidden value. The hero is the customer, the hero is down, right? But valuable, important. Okay. Then there's the middle, which is the trigger, which is where you come in. Yeah. And also what's interesting here is in this story, there's a sh it should also be a struggle. Interestingly, in, in the Cinderella story, right, the fairy godmother, because she's magic, she could have just gone, how you're married. Yeah. Why not? That's magic. But she doesn't. Cinderella has to go to the ball and dance and be herself and charm the prince. Right. Uh, in, in the Rocky fights, Rocky's trainer could have just fixed the fight. But he doesn't, because it doesn't work as a story. So there has to be a kind of struggle. It's not, it's not, rags to riches is not a get rich quick. It's not a quick fix. Okay. At the end of it, of course, the final stage of the story is deserved recognition. So, okay, people can see the hidden value in that person. They go, oh yeah, look. Okay. Right, so that's the that, those are the, the 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 beats of the rags to riches story, beginning, middle, end, down, struggling, up. Your role in that story, when it comes to selling, is to be the fairy godmother, yes, to be the trainer, in the Rocky film, to come in and help in some way, but you're not doing it for them, well, otherwise there'd be no point. Okay, now here's what's interesting is in the hero and guide uh, card. It takes that idea one step further and says, OK, you are not the hero of the story you're telling. Your customer is the hero and you're the guide. So you're the one who's helping them on the way. So it's like it's like a an iteration of the, the fairy godmother. I could have called it fairy godmother anyway. Um, hero and guide is like, a OK, what it's asking you to think about is, right, what kind of fairy godmother what kind of guide are you so on the back of the card it's got six possibilities there are more but i've just chosen six there are six possibilities of what kind of guide you could be for your customer um, and if you choose that guide role okay what are you giving them what are you saying to them as guide okay so they go like this well one guide could be the explorer. So if you're the explorer to your customer, you're like, I don't know, Indiana Jones and leading them out into the wilderness, leading them out on, on an adventure. You're giving them a map. You're giving them a backpack. You're, yeah, you're getting them out of their comfort zone. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. You could be the rebel, in which case you're a kind of Rosa Parks kind of figure or a Han Solo where you're saying, this is not good. Yeah, we don't, we don't, we're not standing for this. We're going to break the rules. Okay. Maybe you're going to be a sage guide, the wise old man or wise old woman. Um, in which case you're saying, I've got stuff you need to know. You need to educate yourself. Here's a book, encyclopedia, crystal ball, whatever it is, whatever you want to be. You'll be better when you know more stuff. Okay. You could be the defender. The defender is basically saying, protect yourself, protect your treasure, whatever that may be. You could be the muse. This has been an interesting one for, for Fran as an author. Maybe maybe her guide role is to be the muse, to say, OK, uh, your job now is to kind of express your own thoughts, your own feelings, express yourself. And I'm going to give you the kind of the paint and canvas to do that. Um, there's another the last of the six is the the warrior. The warrior is the kind of the character who who puts things right um, and you know fights the good fight. And of the warrior, you can think of the warrior as being like the you you know your trainer in the corner, saying, "Okay, here's the plan. Here's what you're going to do. Uh, do if you work hard, you will get better." Be like the personal trainer. Um, okay, so they're all different guides. They all have a different voice, and they all have a different gift to the customer, to help them on that rags to riches story journey. So what I'm going to do in a moment is I'm going to put you into the to the breakouts and for you to start to think about, OK, you, you run these two techniques together. The first is thinking, which what's your customer journey? 
along the Rags to Riches story arc. And then the second card is, okay, and where do I come in? And what do I come in as? Right. Am I Mary Poppins or Albus Dumbledore or Indiana Jones or pick your favorite? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you get the idea. Um, I'm just going to hit pause on the recording. Okay. So uh, thanks. You've all had a few minutes to start playing around with your rags to riches stories. Nicole, you and Larry have um, been making some progress. Do you want to talk us through? Uh, we'll, we're looking at the Miro board right now. And I can see where you've started to put notes. So talk about in the beginning, who's the story about and what's in what way is, is this person, your customer, in a in a negative place? In what way are they down? OK, uh, so Larry has been doing this for me. Uh, he's been putting in the notes. So thank you, Larry. Um, so do you want me to share my story or just yeah. kind of walk through what we've done here yeah, with the we'll, story? Walk through the progress with the story. Yes. OK. Um, okay, so start with the story. Mm, yes, go on. <laughs> and then we'll go through the, okay, yeah. all right. Uh, so once upon a time in the realm of creativity, coaching, and personal growth, in 2017, I found myself entwined with a remarkable client. Let's call her Sarah. She came to me seeking support in the midst of her battles with stuck creativity and her upcoming retirement. From the very start, it was evident that hers was a journey filled with challenges. Week after week, Sarah and I embarked on this transformative adventure together. And she was, as my grandmother would say, a tough cookie with a strong exterior that often hid the pain she carried within. But I was determined, focused on the small victories and brushing off the occasional snide remarks that threatened to overshadow our progress. After a series of sessions, well over a couple of years, I really hesitated. Was <laughs> I truly the right coach for her? I pondered this as I prepared to let her know that our journey might need to take a different path. But curiosity got the better of me. And before making any decisions, I asked Sarah a pivotal question. What kept her coming back week after week? Her answer was simple yet profound. The fact that you don't give up on me, she said. Mm. In that moment, I realized the power of unwavering support and belief. It was a turning point, not just for Sarah, but for me as well. Instead of parting ways, we embraced the challenges as opportunities for growth. Excellent. Okay, well, this, this is a good story because not only does, yeah, well done. Not only does Sarah go through a transformation of rags to riches, Yes. Well, actually, we, we don't know how quite her story ends yet. Well, you, you'll tell us in a moment. So not only is she going through a kind of positive transformation, but so are you. So the fairy godmother is learning something along the way, too, which is great. OK, yeah, you can see how uh, um, how Danny's Danny's fully bought into that story. Um, because, OK, because there is, again, something inside the way that Nicole works. Right. Nicole doesn't give up on people. She sticks with it. Okay. Um, okay. So that you could just tell us that. Yes. I don't give up on people. Right. And then we just got to take your word for it. Or you can play it out. <clears throat> excuse me. You can play it out in the in the story and your hidden value. In this case, we're talking about Nicole's hidden value as a coach. Yeah. Nicole's hidden value comes out in the story and we all go oh yeah yeah we see that right so actually in a way the, the 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 rags to riches version as it stands right now is actually nicole more nicole's story than sarah's in this case nothing wrong with that more nicole's yeah, story than nicole, yeah but that's fine um okay now if you want to so at the moment it's the kind of nicole's story as well okay i've always believed this but i just this is how i've worked we had a really tricky relationship i almost gave up on us the struggle um, the the kind of the interesting thing here was, you know, and the trigger was I was about to give up on her, and then I asked that that key question, and she told me that, and I realised, okay, um, okay, and she, Sarah, had seen this in you, okay. In order to develop it is is as Sarah's story. So at the moment, it's working really well as Nicole's story. Part of developing it as Sarah's story would be okay. 
she's approaching retirement we need to know a little bit about where either where she is now the happy ever after if she's reached a happy ever after right or here's an interesting thing if she hasn't got there yet which is often the way you know, it takes a while for people to get to happy ever afters if she hasn't got there yet but she knows where she's going then that is just as satisfying as achieving the end so if you think okay first now in this case nicole has do would you say in this case that sarah has got where she's going well she's still with me and she has retired and has a full-time creativity practice okay so yes in that she's case painting yes. every day right has a, made a little studio at home and is absolutely feeling more fulfilled than ever with her belief in her creativity and letting go of mm. that, like, who am I without my job of mm. 30 years? Okay, so this is really, really interesting because this comes back to that question of value. Um, and so the way to to draw, I think, to draw out Sarah's story, so Nicole's story is working well. The way to, the way to draw out Sarah's is to, to situate her in a place with people around her. Okay, so in the beginning, she's working in a job and she's seen as a certain kind of person. Sarah's the person who gets the job done. Right. And But she's approaching retirement and she's worried that she's going to be seen as, oh, Sarah, she used to work here, but now she's you know, she just disappeared. So she's Sarah who's retired. And that's how other people see her. So you're situating her, you know, and people around her see her in this way. But... Inside Sarah, there's an artist trying to get out. Right, a creative person trying to get out. The people she's working with don't necessarily see it. They certainly won't see it once she's retired. And that's what worries her. So that's where you meet her at the beginning of the journey. Now, in this case, you well, we all know the ending now. Sarah has retired. She is pursuing a creative practice of her own she's painting every day thanks to nicole's help so again she clearly values that I and mean, she's we're guessing she's happy but here's the key thing that really brings the story really ka-ching payoff moment of the story is how do other people see her so do other people now see see sarah for what she is what she was all along do they value, do they recognize, do they value what she's doing? So if she's got, to make this story really fly, you're thinking, if she's got family members who now see what she's doing and go, wow, I know, I can see why you couldn't wait to retire now because you're doing this. Or even, you know, okay, anyone want to suggest an even better Hollywood ending to this? I think the really good Hollywood ending would be someone who she used to work with back in the day when Sarah was the person who got the job done. Yes, walks into her creative space and goes, wow, we never knew you had it in you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now there's your massive, that's your Hollywood ending payoff. Yeah, Someone who overlooked that aspect of Sarah while she was a worker has now recognises that aspect now that Sarah's retired. Mm hmm nice big, big payoff okay so that is a way that you can play around and so what you're doing with the with with this story arc and with others as well um is you're trying constantly to to accentuate the rise and fall yes you don't want the story to be a timeline that just runs flat well, one day she did this, then she did this, then she did this, then she did this, then she, and, now, and now she does that. Uh, it's just very, very flat. And it's, it just sounds like a list of facts. Right. So what you need to do is to make the positive seem more positive and the negative seem more negative. And I say there are two ways to do it. One is to talk about emotion. So frustration, disappointment, boredom. Yeah. Um, anxiety, all of these are negative emotions. Satisfaction, validation, praise. Yep, all of these are positive emotions. So the more you can 
Yep. Stack the negative and stack the positive. The more the story has its kind of you're looking for the roller coaster um, with with any story mm. you tell. You're looking for 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 so you know there's a there's a line about um, in Cole Porter's song where he says accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative. No, no, it's not right. You accentuate the positive and you accentuate the negative to get the maximum. It's like stretching an elastic band. You get the maximum tension by pulling both ends. If you just pull one end of an elastic band. Yeah, you don't get any tension. You've got to pull both ends. Okay. Um, now, anybody got any anything, any thoughts or questions about Nicole's versions, Nicole's two stories? She's got a story for herself and a story for her customers. Any any thoughts on that from anyone else? Larry, you were watching this take shape? Yeah, and the reason I started typing Nicole's story instead of mine was just I thought it was fun that there were the two stories playing off of each other. Yeah. Absolutely. Now you can obviously separate the two stories out, or you can run them together. It's absolutely fine. They're if, if because they're both following the same pattern, yeah, they they are both they're both good. Um, okay, um, we're going to run slightly over time wise, but is that, I'm okay with that if you are all are. Does anyone else want to ask ask a question or run through a version of a story that you've got now? The the great thing about the, the 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 whiteboard here, the mirror board, is you can just keep adding notes to it in between our sessions. So you don't have to have it all ready. But does anyone have any questions about how to get it to work for them? Um, I did have a specific question mm. just about dragging and dropping um, in the weeks one, two, and three. Oh yes, yeah. It's yeah. just those. Um, those uh, places to input our own stories. And yes. I I found uh, just trying to, I don't know, there, there was just some overlap of, of those boxes and moving those things around. Yes, I think what you could, I mean, I see, I'm looking at your notes now, Tim. Um, I mean, it, you could, don't be constrained. If you want to just, if you want to just create a separate document of your own, yeah, mm -hmm. don't be constrained by my boxes. Uh, just start your own document and just stick a post-it note on so we can all see whose story it is. Um, and do I think the thing with the with the tactics is do as much or as little as you think you need. So if you don't, if you think, well, okay. So my advice would be to all of you. My advice would be write long and then edit short. I mean, this this applies to all all writing anyway. But um, so I would say, follow the template for what's it about, and follow and movie time, okay. So that you've got a a story that goes. I want to tell you about what's it about. For example, movie time, right? That's week one. In week two, you take that and you go right. Listen, I'm going to write long, and I'm going to go. Okay, I want to tell you a story about this. Um, and I'm going to use these hooks to do it. Okay. Um, again, kind of right long. And then when you come to simple sales stories again, you're doing a little bit of the same thing. You're doing a bit of rep repetition. Um, pardon me. But what you'll see, I think, as you as you do this, yes, there is a little bit of repetition in these exercises. Um, but you you kind of end up with several versions of the same story either on paper or in your in your head you've got several versions so you've got a really simple version you can do in 15 seconds yeah and that's going to be what's it about plus a bit of movie time okay you've got a version you can do in 60 seconds you've got a version you can do in three lines of an email you've got a version you can do in a, a one page of a4 so you get lots of different variations of the same story. Does that make sense, Tim? But if if you'd prefer to, for example, if you'd prefer to work in a Word document or a, or a Google Sheet and drag it into the white space for other people to comment on, that's absolutely fine. Whatever you find is whatever you find is most useful. Yeah, and along those lines, I thought that a last week's story a picture was helpful in supporting the story you don't care if 
we add whatever. You stick whatever you like. I love your photograph. Is that actually the thing you made, that Lego? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah of course, yeah. I mean, that that picture paints a thousand words. Of course, it's brilliant. Um, and what I really liked about Larry's story, just to give a little bit of kind of, you know, a little bit of feedback um, on what I've read so far, um, that's a great opening line question. Um, you know, what do you do when the venue you've booked for your conference is so big it makes your product look tiny? Well, yeah. Yeah. Imagine you're selling little tiny pieces of Lego. Yeah. The biggest Lego model, model most people have got is like this big, and you're in a aircraft hangar space. Okay, so it's great. It's really good, really nice, and a nice use of, of, of kind of delayed. So if you imagine, obviously, we saw the... Right, when we came onto the whiteboard, we saw the photograph first, we read the story. Okay. But you could imagine delivering that in a way so that you present the problem. You've got an aircraft hangar-sized venue, massive, right, for a tiny product, Lego. What are you going to do? So you, you give us the problem, we go, oh, I don't know. Bang, here's the image. So you can delay drop yeah, for maximum kind of, and then everyone goes, oh, right. So timing is everything. Uh, obviously on the whiteboard, yeah, you can drag in anything you like. You can drag in your own documents. You can drag in your own images. Um, and I think what's, what's lovely is that, that, you, that Fran has started to do this already is you then start dropping comments on other people's work. Um, and this is a, you know, it's a really nice thing to do. Um, and I'll start dropping comments on things as well, um, just so that, uh, yeah. And then the, so the plan then is I'll slightly tidy up, uh, well, I'll, I'll, right, I'll keep the flow of things going for weeks. I'll also start dropping notes in for weeks five and six. So you can start to use this board here as your kind of general workspace, um, as well as the, the Google document we sent around. Um, okay, I'm going to, let me stop. I should have stopped the recording. Hold on. I stop recording. What's going on? Ah, stop recording. Uh, hold on. Stop recording.